Hey, what's going on, guys? It's me, yours truly, Michael Johnson Boxing Talk and more. <clears throat> so, in a recent video with hype, fight hype, or Floyd hype, or whatever you want to call it, uh, the Bronze Bomber came out and said that uh, he's around 230. Um, a lot heavier than what, what I thought he would come in. I was thinking around 215, maybe 220 top. But he said 230. And uh, Fury said uh, 270. Um, and we don't see Deontay Wilder walking around in the sling. He seems, seems to be a healthy guy. Same way as Tyson Fury. Um, but at the same time as this is what you got to understand it, is that Wilder was able to knock down Tyson Fury at two o at two o nine. Maybe at that time in the ring, after he sweated out after all them twelve rounds leading up to the twelfth round. Maybe that was he was two o five, two o four. So now we got a guy coming in here that um, you know. <clears throat> Hasn't had a, a, a arm injury uh, in camp. It's not coming to a flight with the flu. Coming in with the guy that uh, obviously lasted 12 rounds. Obviously looked like he was in the best shape of his life. Because if you look at the Tom, uh, the Shorts fight and the Ottawa Lean fight, hey, what, what would you say? Is it, was Tyson Fury in better shape or was he in worse shape? I would say the same shape. Optimal level. So there's there's really no factor in it. You know, I hear you know guys around here saying that well Tyson Fury was at a disadvantage because he fought two nobodies before leading up to fighting Deontay Wilder in the first fight. But guess what? Tyson Fury fought Tom Schwartz and Otto Wallin leading up to the Deontay Wilder fight. Hey, he happened to get cut and he happened to not know what the fuck to do really. But survived that fight because he couldn't get him out of there. But let, but hey, listen. Wilder's hopefully Wilder is 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 is, is correct with what he's saying. He's coming in here at two thirty. Um, Fury said two seventy. Um, I haven't seen any weigh-ins yet on both fighters, but two thirty seems like a very good uh, optimal level for Deontay Wilder. 270 does not seem like an optimal level for Tyson Fury. Um, I believe with Vladimir Klitschko, Tyson Fury came at 240. <clears throat> the fight before that was Robert Bolionius, uh, no, Christian Hammer, and I think he came in there around the same weight, maybe 250, 260, right? So you mean to tell me um, that if Klitschko hit you harder, and Klitschko rated around 240. Uh, you weighed around 240 at the time. Uh, Deontay Water coming at 230. You coming at 270. What are you scared about? Um, I, uh, I, 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 I seriously think that they think that the weight is going to be a factor because leaning on Deontay Wilder and those, uh, you know, Black of the back of the glove, fist punches, jabs, and stuff like that. You think you're gonna land on the ice, or what is gonna make a toll on him? But what you gotta understand is this one thing: is that the more weight you put on, the slower you're gonna be. The more weight you're gonna be on, the more weight you're gonna have to carry in the ring. So you might not be as faster as you were before when. Anthony Joshua lost the weight. He lost the weight because obviously he needed to be faster against a slicker fighter. Now you know that you're not going up against a slicker fighter. You think that you could gain the weight to overexert your will on the other fighter to try to get the knockout because you had some success against a fighter that was um, too quick to, to pull the trigger. Now you ain't got to worry about that in this fight because obviously there's no hand breakage and there's none of this. And, you know, <clears throat> Wilder understands that he made mistakes in the first fight and that was too quick to pull the trigger. 
So what are you going to do, Tyson Fury? What are you going to do, Deontay Wilder as well? I'm not trying to sound too biased because I'm a Deontay Wilder fan, but at the same time as you do have to understand that all these guys are scared of the right hand. And not only that, I would tell you, this is the re main reason why I know Tyson Fury is scared of the right hand. Listen to how he talks about everybody else but Deontay Wilder. He holds high, Deontay Wilder in a higher regard than a lot of guys because Deontay Wilder was was able to do something to, to Tyson Fury that Tyson Fury wasn't able to do to him. I don't care what type of fighter you is. I don't care what type of person you is. At the end of the day, guess what? If you're a warrior and you get in the ring and you get knocked down twice, and you know now well those first couple of rounds you might have lost. And some in between, some late. And then you lose two because you got knocked down. And then not only that, how do you best somebody in a boxing match or in a fight when you didn't knock out the other guy and, and you didn't bloody and bless his nose and Make some cuts here and there and, you know, but you got knocked twice, died down twice. Deontay Waters didn't get knocked down once. So, you know, at the end of the day, you really lost that fight. You're trying to maintain on something that you fucking can't hold. You came in there to fight the champ and you came in there and, and, and fought a fight not to win against the champ. And you, and you came up with a draw and you mad. And you're holding on to the lineal shit. But like I said, 230 Wilder versus a 270 Tyson Fury. I'm going to tell you this one thing. The shit ain't even. The shit is not even. Whatever you think you got in your body because you're 270 against a 230 Wilder, it's what you got ain't been invented by God. What you got ain't been invented by God to keep you off the fucking canvas. And you have to understand that. You got knocked down twice with 209. And we saw Wilder fight at 225 and, and stuff like that and close to 230, 230. So guess what? What you going to do? You're going to have to deal with that, homie. Not me. I ain't getting in the ring with that motherfucker. Hell nah. And you know you're shaking in your boots. Because you ain't saying shit bad about this guy. Yeah, you might insinuate his power ain't all that and stuff like that. But you know now well. I don't know how I got up. I didn't see the punch. Came out of your mouth. Not mine. So what does that mean? Hmm. Hmm. Shit. Grace by angels or something. I don't know. Maybe that coke kicked in. I don't know. Maybe because your head didn't go bang, bang off that fucking canvas like it was supposed to do. That saved your ass. That's what really saved your ass. Your head didn't bounce off the canvas like it was supposed to. And that's the only thing that saved your ass. So you better be thankful. Lead him to this fight. I'm predicting that Wilder's going to, you know, knock out Tyson Fury. Not to say that Tyson Fury doesn't have enough power to get Deontay Wilder. But I give Tyson Fury a 25% chance in the, and the rest of that 75 against a knock, for a knockout of Deontay Wilder knocking out Tyson Fury to, him, to, to Deontay Wilder. Other than that, I'm going to tell you like this. Don't be surprised if Deontay Wilder is the one that's doing the outboxing. Do not be surprised if Deontay Wilder is the one doing the outboxing. And on that note, shout out to the LDBC and everybody stay sucker free.